believers, I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love! It's been a while since we've checked in on the Marvel Cinematic Universe, hasn't it? Let's rectify that now with today's subject, Doctor Strange. Released in 2016, Doctor Strange is, as was the animated version we reviewed before, the tale of a surgeon who loses his hands, but gains so very much more. Doctor Stephen Strange is mutilated in a car crash, but learns of a cure, which leads him to study the very magic his rational mind dismissed. But this magic was also what drove a former student into a very irrational desire, to destroy time itself. So come with me to Kamatai for another sensational slice of amazing action in the mighty Marvel tradition. Doctor Strange. Meet Doctor Stephen Strange, neurosurgeon. Our protagonist is a brilliant neurosurgeon with a photographic memory and a taste for 1970s music trivia. On the way to give a speech, Distracted by a phone conversation, Strange loses control of his sports car, and crashes. Oh! Nasty! But don't worry folks, he makes it through. Wouldn't be much of a movie if he didn't now, would it? <laughs> his hands, however, are no longer up to snuff for delicate brain surgery. In Physio, Strange hears the tale of a patient who recovered from severe spinal damage. Strange seeks out this man, one Jonathan Pangborn. The place you're looking for is called Kamartaj. And so the good doctor makes his way to Nepal, but ends up down the wrong alleyway. Luckily, he's soon saved by a friendly stranger. Our motto for this production is portrayed by one Shuatel Ejiofor, who leads Strange to Kamotaj. Behold, our Ancient One, who is Celtic, because China. Which is also why Kamotaj isn't in Tibet. But if we get into that whole mess, we'll be here all night. Let, let, let's just move on, let's move And while the Ancient One is reminded of her last failure, no. Mordo argues that Strange may yet be useful, and training begins. Ah yes, training, which is equal parts theory, in which the good doctor excels thanks to his photographic memory, and practice, in which he does not excel because of his own ego. You cannot beat a river into submission. Luckily, his first test isn't his last, and Strange advances quickly, even to the point that he investigates a stolen ritual of forbidden power. Behold the Eye of Agamotto! At its core lies... well, wouldn't that just be telling? But Mordo and Wong are quick to point out just why these rituals are forbidden, and by extension, the real purpose of Kamataj. Permit me then to reveal to you the true purpose of Kamataj. Kamataj is a haven from the world where we shall train the next Sorcerer Supreme and a generation of sorcerers to protect the world from mystical threats, from within and without. To this end, there are three Sanctum Sanctorum in London, Hong Kong, and New York. But all too soon, Caecilius, our former master, attacks one of the three sanctums. And just like that, the good doctor finds himself back in New York. And in a fight for his life. But through sheer luck, the good doctor finds a relic that takes a liking to him. And immobilizes Caecilius long enough to get some kind of exposition out of him. For you see, gentle viewer, Caecilius came to the Ancient One a broken man, mired in grief for lost loved ones. Perhaps it was this grief that drove him to Dormammu in the first place. Perhaps once Caecilius was a reasonable man, 
but his very unreasonable quest to destroy time may just be rooted in grief and the desire to destroy death. But then, some people say that death gives life meaning. But oh dear, Caecilius kept him talking too long. But not long enough to finish the job. As one good doctor seeks another. But danger persists, even in the astral plane. Long story short, strange winds. And Strange confronts the Ancient One. You see, while Caecilius was restrained, he let slip a little secret. The Ancient One has been drawing power from the Dark Dimension herself, in order to live a little bit longer. Just long enough to find somebody who could succeed her. And Dr. Stephen Strange is the first guy in centuries to be able to wear the mantle of Sorcerer Supreme? Surely not. But hey. And when they return, Strange traps the Zealots in the Mirror Dimension. Which turns out to be a mistake, as they only become stronger in the Mirror Dimension. But then, the Ancient One appears to end this madness. She doesn't. And in an extended moment, the Ancient One gives her final wisdom. It's not about you. So passes the Ancient One after centuries of protecting the planet. A moment, esteemed viewers, if you please. enough of that then, let's finish this. And so to Hong Kong, but seemingly too late. One improbable fight sequence later, Strange realises a greater truth, and seeks to strike a deal with Dormammu himself, which goes about as well as you'd expect. Over, and over, and over, and over, and over, and over, and over. Until Dormammu realises that he doesn't like time loops. <laughs> and so the Earth is saved! But it's all too much for Mordo, who decides that there are too many sorcerers. So that was Doctor Strange. And I just have to put this one into my house of love. This live action version, weighing in at a good half hour longer than the animated movie of 2007, certainly makes the pre-accident Stephen Strange that much more personable, and seems to soften the character of Mordo somewhat, delaying his inevitable heel turn until the very end of the story. But is it better than the animated movie? Well, it's certainly weirder. Yes, the story of the arrogant surgeon who must forego his ego to protect the greater good remains in both of these versions, but in this movie, it's less about learning combat and claiming power, and more about finding better ways to live that don't involve killing. And this movie delivers an entire multiverse of possibility, trippy visuals, mind-expanding action, and a very different kind of climax, which would all be so very empty if the performances weren't up to snuff. Thankfully, we are blessed with Benedict Cumberbatch, the favourite of dirty girls everywhere, and Shuatel Ejiofor, the Mordo we deserve, bringing real life to these characters. The scene where Strange expresses his dismay at having to kill a man just to protect the Earth, perhaps it is the privilege of a civilian doctor, but it's played with an absolute truth. Not to mention that this is a very funny film in places, doing no small part to Cumberbatch's deadpan delivery. And on that subject we have to mention Benedict Wong's, um, Wong, whose own deadpan very much amuses me. And I would be doing a disservice to Rachel McAdams if I didn't at least mention her Christine Palmer, who is just the right amount of freaked out as an estranged friend who turns up one day able to seemingly do the impossible. And, in terms of flow, this movie is buttery smooth, with setup and payoff, scene flows into scene, 
and with the exception of a few scenes, this is all about Stephen Strange. Which is rather at odds with the Ancient One's advice to our good Doctor, and really, the only flaw I can see in this movie is that as weird as it is, it still isn't weird enough. Escheresquely beautiful reality bending, literal gravity defying fights, hands upon hands upon hands upon hands. This movie was only limited by the imagination of the CG artists that helped to create it. Geometric kaleidoscope shapes are far beyond the average moviegoer's expectations, and fighting forwards while a mystical sanctum rebuilds itself in reverse time is certainly new. But the movie does kind of explain away magic as a sort of source code to reality. So as part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Doctor Strange is a stepping stone to an even larger canvas. And as a standalone movie, it requires next to no prior knowledge to enjoy on its own level, being the origin of the master of the mystic arts. So is it better than the animated movie? Yes, it's sharper, funnier, and part of a larger universe. And is it a good movie in its own right? Definitely. It's equally funny, sad and actiony, and a worthy addition to this ever-expanding tale. And you don't have to go all the way to Nepal to watch it. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? And if that doesn't work, why not consider sharing it with someone you think might like my house of love? And if you're feeling extra awesome, check out my crowdfunding links in the description below. But for now, I've been Funky Monkey wishing you good days and great entertainment. So long, folks!